Amazing. Perfect. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Um, this is our first comeback session of Press Pet Remote after a little break that we took over summer. We are super excited. Today's session is going to be really different to all the masterclasses that we've done before. If you haven't done so already, please introduce yourself in the chat. We'd love to hear um, where you're joining us from, where you're studying, what you're up to, your Twitter handle so we can all follow each other. And um, today's session is all about how to ace your course, whether you're studying journalism or not, but you're interested in journalism, whether you're doing a university course or maybe more, some more like intense vocational training. Hopefully today is a space for us to ask questions, get top tips and learn from each other and get ready for what is gonna be a really busy term. Like I said before, we're gonna do this in two parts. The first part, I'm gonna ask everyone to keep their microphone and their video off. Um, and I'm gonna introduce our, our guests and we're gonna do a little bit of a Q&A. We'd love to hear your questions, so please type them into the chat. Um, and the second part, we're gonna ask everyone to turn on their mics and their video and we're gonna do a bit of networking. So I don't know about you, but I miss meeting, meeting new people at events and finding out what they're up to and what they like and hearing their stories. And we're gonna try and emulate a little bit of that um, in these COVID times of ours. So because the session is all about acing your course and how do you get through it and, and not just get through it, but get the best out of it, regardless of the circumstances, we all know that things have changed very quickly in the last six months and they probably will keep changing in the next six months. So how do, how do we build on um, our knowledge together to try and make the best out of what is clearly a very complicated situation. And for that, I've asked my lovely guests, which I will introduce one by one, to think about what is their COVID-19 proof top tips for student journalists. Whether it's uni journalism or anything, what is the one thing we all wish we knew when we were younger? And I'm gonna reveal my guests one by one um, with a little theme because now it's all kind of pressure themed. And I'll, and I'll kick it off just to kind of set the tone. So these are pictures from when I was a fresher at uni. Um, <laughs> and I thought having orange hair was a normal thing to do. Um, and by the way, while I, while I introduce us one by one, you'll also see our Twitter handle. So please ramp up our Twitter followers. Um, we love that. Why not? Part of the reason why we do this, to get more Twitter followers. Um, so my, my one COVID-19 top tip would be take like grab the fact that we're all stuck at home and use that in your advantage. So whereas before maybe your lecturers, and I used to teach at a uni, wouldn't have taken a Skype call as something to hand in with your reporting or would have really frowned upon um, something that you like news gathered over the internet instead of going to do it in person. Now you kind of have to do that for a lot of things. So use that to your advantage and shoot high for the kind of stories that you want to tell, even if they're far away. So next up on the list of, of people to introduce is ah! <laughs> Lynn Butler. Lynn, tell us a little bit about yourself and what's your top tip? Loving the hair, right. by the way. In all the I'd just like to point out that it was a very long time ago that I had my first, I think I've had about three or four lots of freshers experiences now. These are quite a long time ago. I'm not gonna say how many years, 30 years ago. Um, so yeah, uh, my name is Lynn. I am a graduate teacher at the University of Wolverhampton on the multimedia journalism course and I also teach on the media degree. Um, I've had quite a strange experience of getting to where I am now in that I was uh, a journalist uh, from sort of 2003 to 2011 full time. I did an NCTJ at Wolverhampton um, then unfortunately the recession hit and eventually I was made redundant. I was out of uh, journalism for quite a long time, realised that it is just the best job in the world and it really is. The, the experiences that you can have, the people that you meet and I missed it so much. Realised that I wanted to get back into journalism but in the time that I'd been away it had completely transformed. When I was a journalist you had a pen and a pen and a paper, bit of paper and that was it, that you could do your job. Um, but on the multimedia side, I was completely out of it. I wasn't employable. I knew what a great story was. I knew how to find a great story and how to write it, but I didn't know how to transfer it to all the different digital platforms. So I headed back to Wolverhampton where I did my training, did the final two years of a degree. Um, I uh, graduated last year, this time last, this time, yes, well, yesterday, last year, um, 
and was taken on as a graduate teacher at the university who are also paying very kindly for my teacher training. So I teach full time on the degree and also do teacher training at the same time. So I'm hoping that I can tell you a little bit about my experiences, both from being, being a recent graduate and also now teaching journalism as well, and from my vocational background. So, so what's the top tip you wish um, yeah, my fresh face Lynn knew yes. that Lynn in those photos? <laughs> what are you wishing you? I think the, the, thing that, um, the thing that I did actually when I came back to university, because I'd got more recent experience as a journalist rather than as a student, was that I treated my university town as my patch and as soon as I kind of started the degree I just started making phone calls going hi I'm a student journalist I'm on this course I've got access to this equipment I can cover things for you I can be your contact in the city um, and that worked brilliantly for me in that I went out I made these contacts I treated it like my patch as if I was at work you may be given patches actually when you when you start news days uh, and from that, for instance, I put in a call to a local MP, didn't hear anything. Then a couple of weeks later, he wanted to produce his own news story for his website. And so he asked me to, to film that and to make the news story for him, which is brilliant because then I had content on an MP's website. And I could also put that in my own portfolio. So it started to sort of pay off straight away. And obviously with building up contacts for, for news days, that it worked really well for me. So that would be my tip is just treat the city where you are, like your patch, your town, like your patch. And get out there and make contacts which you can do you know online by phone which is pretty much the way that i did it so covid really hasn't affected that amazing top tip and thank you so much lynn for joining us um the i forgot to say that the people on the panel um we we chose them really carefully we wanted to look at universities outside of london so we've got lynn from wolverhampton and ian joining us from the center for journalism at the university of kent and also someone to talk to us about studying journalism outside of university which is where lucy dyer comes in um, and all of these kind of, I don't want to call them less traditional because they're not. It's just not necessarily all the unis and the places that get big press, right? And nevertheless, where people are doing really interesting and exciting work. So let's reveal our next guest. And it is the lovely <laughs> Nicholas Lawson from Press Pad Sporting, an amazing hat. Um, Nicola, what would be your top tip that is COVID proof for people studying journalism? Um, my top tip, you kind of already mentioned it in your introduction and I was like, stop talking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my top tip is to make the most of the people that you are studying with. Um, you, you might think, oh, I'm not going to all these top networking events in London. I can't do work experience in the newsroom at the moment, for example, so I can't do any networking. Um, but, but the people who are the same sort of level as you, your peers, they're the people that you should be networking just as much with um, as more senior people, because they're the people who are going to be your colleagues um, and, and potentially even commission you. Uh, I'm a freelance journalist. I've been commissioned by people I did my MA with because they've ended up in commissioning roles and vice versa, because I've had a commissioning role and I've, I've commissioned um, them. It's also where you find out about jobs um people will pass stuff on to you because they they know how good you are on your course um and sort of added to that tip is can you work with your um with your fellow students a group of you perhaps and do a do a project just yourselves um that, that will really add to your cv and add to your time there so when i did my undergrad which these pictures are from i was heavily involved in the student media um i ended up running the radio station as the editor of the student paper <laughs> i was an overachiever at a young age um <laughs> and then i didn't do journalism for the next what well, 10 years or something um <laughs> When I did my MA in journalism, um, my friends and I started a, a blog that was part of the course. It was part of the multi, multimedia thing. Um, and it was a food, uh, foodie thing called um, Hungry and Hackney, because our patch was Hackney uh, in London. And um, we ended up carrying that on, um, which was great because we got loads of free food. So uh, <laughs> this is not anything I really write about now, but um, it was great because we worked together. Those, those guys in that who I did that with are still my really good friends. Uh, we pass on tips and advice now. Um, we, we don't do the website anymore, but it was a great project and it was really good to put on our CVs. Um, and we even made contacts with people who ended up being useful and later, later on as well. For example, 
I interviewed um, Gizzy Erskine when I was on the Guardian news desk when they desperately needed a chef. Last minute, I had like 20 minutes to find a chef that was quite famous uh, for a quote. And um, luckily, I already knew one. So that's my top tip. <laughs> Amazing. So network with your peers and do projects that kind of give you that portfolio and let you build on. Let's reveal our next guest. So lovely Lucy. <laughs> Take it away. What's your top tip? <laughs> um, you're most welcome for that photo of me dressed as an elf, by the way. The only <laughs> ones I ever had on my own, I was dressed up. Um, hi, everyone. I actually recognise quite a few of your names from different workshops that we've done throughout the summer and actually some of you on current courses. So sorry you've got to see me again. Um, <laughs> so my story is that I always knew I wanted to be a journalist, but I didn't know how, which is why I spend quite a lot of my time now trying to show people how to get into journalism. Um, so I went to Southampton and did a geography degree. Absolutely loved it, did loads of work experience in all of my summers and stuff like that. My first mini top tip would please, please do student media. Whether you're doing a journalism degree or not, student media is like the best thing ever. And if I interview someone for our postgraduate courses, um, I find it odd if they haven't done any student media. So just give it a go. It's a really good way of finding out if it's for you. Um, I left Southampton and found out about the NCTJ, which is where I sort of now work and News Associates. So I went on to do my NCTJ at News Associates as a postgrad course. Um, after that, I sort of dabbled in breaking news and sort of national newspapers, also women's magazines, which are great fun. Um, and then I went back to News Associates, ran one of the websites that we run called Southwest Londoner, local news, again, brilliant, um, really kind of on the ground reporting. Um, and then I got hired by News Associates, where I now work as the editorial development manager, and I work really closely with our undergraduate and postgraduate trainees. Um, I suppose my top tip, um, and Laura's going to, I hope, love me for saying this, um, but it's what you can do with one of these, uh, mobile journalism. <laughs> um, you are so <laughs> likely to have one of those in your pocket, and you are very unlikely to have a huge camera crew in your pocket. And something that both Laura and Nicola kind of touched upon in the fact that a lot of people are at home at the minute, so they're quite easy to get hold of. Um, so you can do sort of mobile journalism via Zoom, via Skype, via FaceTime. Everything can be recorded and edited from the powers of your laptops or your phones. Um, I think when I first started out in journalism, which actually wasn't that long ago, but I'm quite old school at heart and I'm a huge shorthand fan. But I think the reason I'm, I'm stressing much about shorthand is because I know as well as teaching what you may call those old fashioned skills, we still teach all of the very new, modern, up to date digital journalism, multimedia skills. I think they're just equally as important. Um, but yeah, I'd say mobile journalism. And when I interview people for courses and they're like, what can I do between now and the course starting? And I'm like, well, you can't teach yourself shorthand, wait for us to do that. But you can sort of play around on your phone, download some apps, see what you can do, check out some recording software. Um, because sort of digital is the future. Excellent. Thank you so much, Lucy. And I'm going to ask Ayo to do some shameless self-promotion and find the, the masterclass we did on mobile journalism and drop it in the chat so you guys can go and watch that because we did one on that. And now, last but definitely not least, and I'm really sorry, this wasn't meant to be, I, I just did them like randomly when I was putting the slides together earlier. So I hope nobody has said what you had thought as your top tip, <laughs> Ian. Um, but we've got Ian Reeves joining hey. us, the head of the Centre for Journalism at the University of Kent and my former boss, Ian, what's your COVID proof top tip? Hmm. So first of all, I, I guarantee there's nobody else on this chat who had to go into the loft to dig out a box with print <laughs> photographs in it to find something that's old enough to be from the time that they were at university. So. Um, that's that puts that you know that puts me firmly in in uh, the age bracket that uh, um, gives me the seniority to be last, I suppose. Um, <laughs> I would absolutely echo the tech thing. So, uh, well, actually, let me a bit just a very quick bit about myself. So, so that 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 photograph was taken the year I went to uh, the University of Nottingham to study engineering, um, and <laughs> it was only the end of that uh, three-year degree that I realized that engineering was not something I wanted to pursue and journalism most definitely was um, and I applied I wrote to 40 different magazine companies 
uh, one of whom had a graduate scheme for science and engineering graduates to turn them into um, science journalists, basically. And that was my in, and that was the, the, the kind of fabulous transition that I was able to make. And I, so I trained with them. And the thing that I realized very quickly, and it was, um, and again, this, this uh, ages me horrifically, but the, my first day at work, the th I was shown to my desk and the thing that was on my desk was a, um, a typewriter, a manual typewriter. And that's how I bashed out my first stories. But within a few months, um, the company that I was uh, being trained uh, by and working for started to, to introduce computer technology. And I realized how powerful that was going to be. And when a lot of my older colleagues were running scared and, and terrified from this new hideous way of working, I realized it was, it was a passport to, to other things. And there was a new software package appeared not long after that called Quark Express, which was a, a desktop um, design and layout package. And I made sure that I understood that package inside out and became the kind of go-to person within the within you know parts of the company to to do that stuff and that then sprung me out of the engineering and science kind of niche into broader journalism and i was able to take those skills around literally around the world and, and work as um as a freelance uh in writing but also in subbing and design um, because of that grasp of technology and, and you, the, the same thing will be happening is happening now it's, it's kind of only accelerated so if you grasp whatever the, whatever the new bit of tech is just grasp it as firmly as you can and start producing content using that tech technology um, you know it's 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 um, it's TikTok now but it's probably something else tomorrow and whatever that thing is tomorrow be on it be on it and, and grab it. So yeah, I'd echo that. I, my other thing is, is kind of a bit more abstract really, probably. And it's, um, it's be confident and believe in you, believe in yourself, particularly those of you who are going into undergrad programs for the first time. It's very easy to look around the, look around the room or look around the Zoom and see a bunch of people who you kind of automatically think are more confident or better than you or are um, somehow better equipped and you'll be feeling a bit terrified and not quite sure what to do and, 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 and you know in a, in a very um, you know different place than you've been used to just believe in yourself and don't be, you know when that little voice in your head is whispering in your ear you're not as good as these people you can't you can't really do this this is you're but you're you know you're you're busking this aren't you just tell it to shut up and and get on and believe because that is uh you know you are all everybody who is has got this far to be signed up to a course and realized that journalism is a great thing has the capability of of making a success of it and so i just really urge you to believe in yourselves on that very sweet note, and thank you for the mention of TikTok, because someone had to do it, otherwise I was going to do it at some point, because it's just my thing now. Um, we also have, and I, I was just going to ask if Io and Amber, who are joining us on the call, which is completely unfair, right, because they were freshers like two years ago versus the rest of us, um, <laughs> but if there's something that you guys have learned from studying in lockdown and, and, going, and doing uni for the last term, basically, that you'd want to share and you don't have to share it with your voice if you don't feel comfortable but if you want to type it in the chat um that's also fine but just kind of wanted to acknowledge that you guys are here you're part of this team you're amazing and and you're speaking from that other side right we're all coming at it from kind of the more teachery side and you guys had to go through it i was um manning the facebook so i've just messaged her and asked for her tip so um are you there <laughs> so it's the floor's yours the floor is mine. Um, hi everyone, I'm Io, uh, social media editor for Presspad. Uh, my top tip will probably be to not leave work until the last minute, which is a typical uh, <laughs> student thing to know, but especially with the pandemic and everything going on, if you can do get interviews or get your work done early, 
you should definitely do that beforehand because you never know what's going to happen. Like we were all hit with lockdown almost suddenly and we had to change up everything. So if you can get it done earlier, get it done earlier. Amazing. And if you guys haven't watched um, the Instagram live series that we did across the last season of Press Pad, Ayo's amazing. We're not going to be able to afford him very soon. So go and watch those back <laughs> on our Instagram account. Um, Ayo also did us the favor of putting Sorry, a call out. Sorry, Sorry, I've got the tip from Amber. Go, go, read it out. So her top tip is, well, she's kind of got two. Well, she's got three actually, but they're little ones. So um, <laughs> just take every opportunity that comes your way. So grab it with both hands. Um, apply for things you, you think you're underqualified for because it's really good experience. So you can start doing that you know, as soon as possible, because it, get, it gets you used to how journalism applications work. And um, uh, yeah, and now is the time to build your portfolio. So that's why you should take every opportunity you can. Um, and then the final tip is you should sign up to the press pad newsletter, which she <laughs> writes, which actually I'm putting words in her mouth because I was like, I'm going to tell them that you said that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's really good. She has like a column at the top, which is um, like a diary of a young journalist. Um, and then she finds all the best opportunities, all the best events um, that you should attend, that most of them are digital at the moment, or all of them actually are. And she also has like a diversity reading list, so like diversity in journalism. It's really good and it goes out every other week on a Thursday. So do sign up. I'll get Io to put the link in the chat. Okay, carry on. <laughs> Sorry, Laura. Love the shameless self-promotion. <laughs> we're, we're just really hamming it up, aren't we? Um, so. I also helped us put a couple of calls out on social media just to see if anybody who's recently graduated from journalism had any tips to share from studying in lockdown. Um, and two people sent us a little video, so I'm going to play them. And then afterwards, we'll have a couple of minutes for any questions that you guys have got. Start thinking about them and putting them in the chat. Um, and, then, and then we'll wrap it up and move on to the next bit. So the first one came from um, the lovely Michelle Theo, and it's about kind of like student journal tips. So how do you, how do, you do the studying part of it? And um, Nicola, I'm going to ask you to give me a thumbs up just to check that the sound works once it starts running. And if not, I'm going to have to fiddle around with Zoom a bit. Hi everyone, Danielle here. I'm a master's student and over the lockdown period I was working on my essays as well as my thesis. And I have a few tips for all of you. So the first one I would say is to find a study buddy. So every two weeks my friends and I would have regular Zoom calls where we would go over our essays with each other and ask each other any questions that we weren't sure about. I think it was really nice because it made us feel like we weren't alone, which a lot of us may feel like we are during lockdown. And it also helps us to see what we're maybe doing wrong in our essays, which all of us kind of need sometimes. And then the second tip I would say is to make sure that you have a routine. It's really easy during lockdown to go to bed late and also work up late and to feel like you're not really being as productive as possible. But I think if you do have a timetable, then it makes you feel like you do have some sort of structure to your day. So I would say to make a very general timetable for the week, writing down when you have commitments and also making sure that you work when you are your most productive. So if you prefer to work in the morning, make sure you work the most then. And if you are more productive in the evening, obviously do the bulk of the work then. And then what I like to do is at the start of each day, I make a more specific timetable and I write down what I'm gonna do for that day work-wise. And I also make sure to give myself some time off because I think it's important to not work 24 hours a day. So make sure that you have regular breaks, you are kind to yourself during the period and also I hope that you all take care and you have a very productive lockdown learning session. And now I just realized that I accidentally skipped to the next video when I introduced Michelle. So I'm gonna go back to the other one. This was the lovely Danielle <laughs> D'Souza who also sent us her thoughts. Let me see if I can make technology work for me. There we go. All right, now this is Michelle. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle, I'm a recent journalism grad and if you want to get into journalism and if you're just starting uni now, obviously get into student media, a very obvious thing to do. Make sure you try out loads of different sections, don't just stick to news or features or opinion. Try loads of different stuff because you might find a brand new passion that you never knew existed. You might write one sport piece at uni and absolutely hate it or you might write one sport piece and then decide that you love football and Formula One and cricket and everything else uh, and that could be a whole new niche for you you know write lots of different stuff because it's the only time in your life that you're going to be able to kind of write whatever you want and you know just 
get stuck into everything, be really keen, be really enthusiastic. That's what people love. Time and date, everything you have. Make sure you keep copies of your articles, even if they're online on a website, download the website, print it out, you know, you never know what's gonna happen. Keep all of your records, keep all of your interview notes, keep all of your recordings. It's a really good habit to build for the future. Good luck with everything, bye. Loving the glass of wine, Nicola. I just clocked that. I left mine in the other room. I should go and fish it <laughs> out. <laughs> um, so we're coming up to seven o'clock and I'm, I'm going to thank again our amazing guests. If anyone's got any super pressing questions, drop them in the chat and we might convince them to stick around for an extra five minutes um, to answer them. So I've got my eyes on the chat and I'm sure um, Amber's got her eyes on Facebook Live if anybody's got any questions through there. Um, but while we wait, um, lovely guests, anybody have anything they want to add? Actually, could I add another tip? Could of I course you really, can. Could I be really cheeky? Yeah. Um, and what I wanted to touch on actually was the, the academic side, the theory side of the, the journalism degree course, because I think I could see as a student and now teaching that there can be um, a lot of journalism students want to be journalists and they kind of struggle. Well, first of all, with the two very different styles of writing and also with the purpose of the theory. And I just want to say that the, the theory I found, having had experience of a journalist and uh, as a journalist and then coming back and looking at theory, is that it sheds a whole different light on it. You start to think about the purpose of journalism, the effect it has, the role it has in society. Whereas when you're just buried in producing your copy and getting it out there, producing your videos and getting them out there, you don't necessarily think about. Um, so I think it's quite tempting to think of the academic side of it, the essay writing, the reading as a kind of a bit of a the bit that you do when you're not doing the stuff you really enjoy. But then I think about, you know, like theorists like someone like Mark Fisher. If you haven't read Mark Fisher, I suggest that I highly recommend him. I mean, he started out as a he's, he was a journalist, you know, so um, that was my tip really is don't don't. Um, enjoy the theory <laughs> if you can. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to head off, Ian. No, no, I'm going to, I'm going to add something as well, if I'm, if I'm Oh, allowed. go for it. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, and it's, it's sort of, f f um, sort of follows on a little from what Lynn was just saying, but, um, it's, it's treat your lecturers as human beings. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, talk to, talk to them as equals. Um, there's a, there's a whole load of stuff that your lecturers do not know, right? So there's a whole lot of stuff, even if they are spending a, you know, a lot of time looking at, at, at um, you know, at journalism practice and journalism theory. It's a whole lot of stuff that they, that, that, you know, there's such a massive field and there's so much happening all the time that they can't keep on top of. And there will there'll be stuff that you learn, the stuff that you, you're interested in, that they will also be interested in. So don't be shy about chatting to them after lecturers, after Zoom meetings, you know, um, you know, we, we, we try to have an open door policy at Kent where in, in normal times, people can just literally drop by and, 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 and chat. And, you know, the same thing will apply in, in a lot of universities and in, in courses like News Associates, I'm sure the, the, the guys who are doing the training there are interested in stuff. They're interested in journalism and they're interested in you. So treat them as such. Don't be sitting there in the in the back, just taking notes and then scurrying away. The more engagement that you have with them, the more you will get out of it. The more they will notice you, um, and they can be hugely, hugely useful to to you in terms of the contacts that they can put you in touch with too. So, you know, they they may be a bit older than you and and been around the block a few times and have quite a lot more grey hairs and less hair in my case, but um, just treat them as equals. Lecturers are people. <laughs> Lucy, is there anything that you that you want to add? Um, I'll probably just continue to bang on about the thing that I think is most important, which is the NCTJ. Um, if you're finishing university and trying your luck at jobs, have a look at what they're asking for, and it's usually an NCTJ. There are loads of ways you can do it as part of an undergrad, as part of a master's of on its own, but I would just say, please get your NCTJ in one form or another. It's yeah, really important. I just, yeah, I just back up what Lucy said. My NCTJ was absolutely invaluable. Um, 
and you may be told in certain quarters that it's not important and that you don't necessarily need it but it's well worth it's well worth doing it really is it gives you an edge it gives you something that you won't get necessarily with your degree someone's just asked what it is um it stands for ah. the national <laughs> council for the training of journalists um, it's kind of like the industry standard qualification for getting into journalism. So if you've got one, the, whoever's hiring you knows, for example, they've got their shorthand, they've got their media law. It's kind of like a standard. Yeah. As I said, there is a variety of ways you can get it, but you do kind of need one. Absolutely. You can do it, and sorry, okay. just one last thing. You can do it as quick as 22 weeks, mm. or you can do it as long as part of your undergrad and get your BA alongside your NCTJ. Yeah. So there is a real, it doesn't matter how you do it. No. I was working. I, I'd actually already started working as a journalist and I did it part time. So there's, there's lots of ways of doing it, like Lucy said. Sorry, Lucy. <laughs> no, I think I actually interrupted Ian. No. no, oh, no right. I Sorry, that. Lucy. Sorry, Ian. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, hold on a second. I, I'm supposed to be hosting this thing. <laughs> Ladies, are you done? And we, we'll, we'll let Ian have a word. Gentlemen. No, absolutely. Just 100% NCTJ all the way. There are, there are other accrediting bodies out there that will, that will put their badge on courses which don't mean anything really. The NCTJ is the one that editors really, really want to see because it's the one that examines you, it tests you. You, you have to pass a whole load of exams to get your NCTJ diploma. And those are the exams that um, you know, really put you through your paces from, from shorthand through to um, you know, radio, to TV, depending, depending on which pathway you choose, uh, law, public affairs, all, the, all those key um, fundamental building blocks that you're going to need throughout your career. Nicola, go ahead. Just to throw a different opinion in. Um, I, I went to City University and it's not NCTJ accredited. Um, and we did all of those things. Uh, I think it's actually just because City had a row with NCTJ at some point in the past. Um, and quite often it'll say NCTJ or equivalent. So if it's an MA, chances are it, it will be um, the editors will consider that okay. So definitely get like qualified, but, um, but your course might be on a par with an NCTJ, but not actually be an NCTJ. Because I did shorthand and public affairs and media law and all of that, so, <laughs> and had to take loads of exams. So yes, that's what I, all I wanted to say. <laughs> I'm just gonna there's fly- a, There's a long history behind that, that city NCTJ rift yeah. <laughs> yeah, their, their postgrad is 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 uh, is um, is accredited. Well, it was the MA that I did, it wasn't actually accredited. Well, yeah. I'm gonna fly the flag for shorthand as a very technical person because your phone is always gonna betray you and it will run out of battery when you least need it to, and if you are not capable to take down a quote and you have to go back to your editor and write up a story or put it into a story or write up um, something else and you can't do it, then you're you're really screwed so just because we live in a super technical time doesn't mean that that is always going to save us and these analog skills are super 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 important and uh, we've got one last question and then we're going to break this all up because i'm taking up too much of everybody's time um someone's asking that any of the speakers do their nctj kind of alongside non-journalism related jobs and and if so or even not do you have any advice for kind of managing that so having like your day job doing don't know cat sitting that was a terrible example, but like a day job and then doing your NCT day on the side. <laughs> Practice your shorthand every day. I used to do it in bed before I got up. I used to set my alarm for half an hour early before I had to get up and just do my shorthand and get it out of the way. Because if you're not doing it every day, you won't get your hundred words. <laughs> any more for any more? Um, Emma, you're coming to study with us, so I feel like we've probably spoken quite a lot. I'm happy to speak to you at another time, but if it helps to reassure you, lots of our part-time trainees do their NCTJ alongside non-journalism jobs as sort of career changes or to break into the industry. I suppose what I'd say is actually everyone you work with is still a contact. You never know when you're going to need to speak to a cat sitter or a hairdresser or a teacher or whatever it may be. So there's actually contacts around you all the time. And I would just say that on your commute to work or but when you're getting ready in the morning as well, just make sure you're reading and watching the news as much as you possibly can. So you're still consuming and sort of surrounded by journalism all the time. Yeah, I mean, journalism is, a lot of journalism is about communities and, um, 
I can't remember whether it was Lucy or Lynn was talking at the beginning about embedding yourself in a community and, and, and you know, the sort of geographical patch, but communities are also um, work communities and um, social communities and cultural communities. And your, so your full-time job or, your, or the job that you're doing alongside your NCTJ is a community and, and that world is something that is gonna, is gonna get you stories. So if you're already embedded within a community, a work community, there are gonna be loads of stories there. You may have to deal with them in interesting and sensitive ways um, if, you know, if you're still pulling a salary from someone and you're trying to expose something, but you know, none, nonetheless, there is journalism to be done um, in that other part of your life. Perfect. Well, I think that's an excellent point to start to wrap this up and move up to the next part. Thank you so much, you guys, for joining us for this first part. Um, you've got everyone's Twitter handles on the screen and um, we'll make sure to tweet them out as well if you want to follow everybody after the fact. I just want to say just one last thing. I know there's the student word before journalism, but the moment that you're doing journalism, you are a journalist. It's a thing that you do. You do journalism. In Spanish, you actually, we say it, hacer periodismo, like to do the journalism. And it's a, it's a verb. So own it. Own the fact that the moment that you're doing journalism, you are a journalist with the responsibilities that that brings as well. And, and just kind of like inhabit that space and own it 100%.